All right, we want to prove that the product of one plus some term of, which is big O of machine epsilon times another term of the form one plus some term that is big O of machine epsilon is equal to one plus big O of machine epsilon. So I don't really like the way that this textbook uses big O notation. I feel like there's scenarios where it's kind of vague what the theoretical definition is and so I've done my best in this exercise to really make it clear what's going on. So let's see here. So throughout this problem I'm just going to use epsilon to mean machine epsilon because that will save room and epsilon will always be greater than zero and let's remember what big O notation means. Um, so all instances of big O notation will hold as epsilon goes to zero from the right. So we say that a function f of epsilon is big O of epsilon if there are constants, positive constants delta and m, such that if epsilon is a positive constant which is less than delta, then the norm of f evaluated at epsilon must be less than or equal to this constant m times epsilon. If you wanted to allow epsilon to be small but negative, that would be fine, but you would just, f of epsilon would just have to be big O of the norm of epsilon here. And then here we would need the norm of epsilon to be less than delta. Okay, so let's prove the desired statement. So we'll take two functions, we'll, um, we'll take this thing over here and this thing over here and use functions f and g to refer to these terms which are big O of machine epsilon. Because I want to prove this rigorously and so we actually need some specific things to use. So let f of epsilon be big O of epsilon and we know that there has to be some delta and m positive constants that correspond with this just um, going by the definition. And so we'll call those delta f and mf, and then we'll have g of epsilon be big O of epsilon, and these constants will be delta g and mg. Okay, so why do we do this? Because now, 1 plus f of epsilon times 1 plus g of epsilon is a term of this form, and this is the general sort of term that we're looking for, or the general sort of expression that we're looking for. Okay, so let delta be the minimum of delta f, delta g, and 1. Um, then whenever epsilon is less than delta, we have the following. So if we look at the norm of the difference between this thing and 1, so if we take this thing up here and move this 1 over to the other side, then we have this product minus 1 must be big O of machine epsilon. So here we want this thing term here to be big O of machine epsilon. So we want the norm of it to be less than or equal to some positive constant times epsilon. So now we multiply this out and we get this. The ones cancel out and then we can use the triangle inequality to get that this is less than or equal to this. And now because delta was chosen to be less than delta f, we can replace f of epsilon with mf of epsilon because delta was chosen to be um, less than or equal to delta g, we know that we can replace that this term must be less than or equal to this term, and obviously this is going to be less than or equal to this, and then um, here we get an epsilon squared because there's going to be two terms here, and so obviously because delta is less than or equal to 1, multiplying by epsilon will only make things smaller, so we can make things bigger by not multiplying by epsilon, so that's how we get from here to here. And then this is just three terms with, um, a, which are all um, positive constant times epsilon, and so we just get, we factor out the epsilon, and we just get some positive constant times epsilon. So therefore, this is big O of epsilon, and so you move the one over, and you have the desired result. So that's how you can go through a statement like this and actually make it really rigorous and prove it mathematically. Okay, and now what we want to do is we want to prove this statement. That one plus a term which is 
big O of machine epsilon. If you take the inverse of this, then that the result is going to be one plus big O of machine epsilon. Now, given that this is a problem that's like part A and part B, I suspect that there is some way that you can. So here's here's a way that um, I sort of thought about like maybe they think you should be able to use or do this. Um, if you take one plus big O of epsilon times one plus big O of epsilon, then you get one plus big O of epsilon. Um, that's what we saw in part A. And maybe they want you to do, maybe they think that you can do something algebraically to this in order to get something that looks like this. But instead of trying to use part A, I just did this directly. So we'll suppose that F is a function of epsilon, which is big O of epsilon, and the constants will be delta and M. Then just through playing around with things algebraically, I was able to get this result. So if you look at one plus M epsilon times this thing, well, this is going to be greater than this because we're using the reverse triangle inequality on the second term here, or the second vector. Then you multiply everything out, and then this minus the absolute value of f of epsilon, because the norm of f of epsilon is going to be less than or equal to capital M of epsilon, negative the norm of f of epsilon will be greater than or equal to minus m of epsilon. So that's how you get from here to here. And then with this term, this minus m epsilon times the norm of f epsilon. Um, wait a minute. Wait a minute, wait a minute. I'm not sure if I did this correctly now that I look about look at it. Okay, so look, let me see if there's anything I can do here. Um, because you can't just... Yeah, because this is a minus a positive term here. So I think I thought that you could just drop that out, but that's dumb. Because you can't do that. Um, so let's see here. You can definitely drop out this f of epsilon. And then I think that this should work. You should be able to get this to work. Um, you should be able to choose delta um, for small enough delta, then you should have, what should you have? Um, should have the norm of delta epsilon is less than or equal to one. Right, you just choose, if, if delta is less than m over epsilon, then delta from this thing is going to be less than or equal to um, m epsilon. And here, epsilon is OK, so I guess this should be epsilon is less than. So if epsilon is less than well, 1 over m. Yeah, so if epsilon is less than 1 over m, then f of epsilon is less than or equal to m epsilon, which is less than or equal to, which is strictly less than 1. Okay, so let's see if we can sort of save this solution. Um, okay, so we need, we need to get, we need to get a 1 here. Okay, so the norm of, right, okay, so this is true, then the, this thing is going to be greater than 1. Well, let's put less than or equal to everywhere. Okay, so then if epsilon is less than um, delta prime, 
which will be the min of delta and 1 over m, then we have the following. We have this thing, then we have this, and then moving from the second term to the third, the minus the norm of f of epsilon drops out because that's a positive term, so removing it will make the term bigger. This minus m, capital M epsilon times f of the norm of epsilon, this can be replaced with just minus m of epsilon, and that's because um, replacing the norm of f of epsilon with minus one um, will be consistent with this, uh, great, with this greater than or equal to sign here, and that's because of this thing. So here, and let's just make this a little more clear. Epsilon is greater than or equal to minus m epsilon. Okay, so that's how we get from this minus m epsilon norm of f of epsilon to this minus m epsilon. And then the m epsilons here cancel out, and so we just get 1. Okay, wow, I was able to save that. So anyways, so we divide the, we take this, this above, this inequality here, and this holds for epsilon small enough, and then we divide this entire inequality by the norm of 1 plus f of epsilon, and so we get this. 1 over 1 plus f of epsilon is equal to this, which is less than or equal to this, because that's what you get when you literally apply this inequality here. But this term is obviously going to be 1 plus big O of epsilon. And this norm here, so we got the norm of this thing is 1 plus big O of epsilon. And this holds for any f, which is big O of epsilon. And we see that this thing in here is of this form, the inverse of 1 plus big O of epsilon. And we've proven that it's 1 plus big O of epsilon. And that's what we wanted to prove. And so we're done with the exercise. And so yeah, this is how you can rigorously prove these things. It's sort of, these sort of turn into like um, baby root in principles of mathematical analysis type problems, uh, which I really like. Um, but yeah, these can be done rigorously and this is the way that you go about doing them and this completes this exercise.